Kenda are night tribe. Seven uh, live in north coast of Kenya. Then uh, <laughs> two live in south coast of Kenya. So you're welcome. My name is Gerald Gambo. I work here around the project. I've been working with the community for many years now. Our Kaya Kinondo is one of the primary Kayas that we have along the coast of Kenya. Back in the 16th century, the Miji Kenda community appeared here on the coast of Kenya today, having migrated Singwaya, which is a mythical home of the Miji Kenda people, believed to be in the north of the Kenyan coast and south of Somalia. First of all, no headwears are allowed in the car. So I put headwear on thinking it was good, yes, but I'll take we it. We have off. a good canopy in the place. <laughs> <laughs> that is one, but basically it is for the respect of the sacred areas of the community. We have the elders who are buried in the car. So to respect those areas, you have to remove them. We have this piece of cloth. Kaniki is the local name of this piece of cloth. We just like do it around the waist like this. It's part of the cultural dresses that are supposed to be used when one visits the kaya. When the community has a function in the kaya, a sacred ceremony, then now the whole community will be in such kind of hotel. This, uh, we have uh, three colors. The black one, we have the white one and the red one. Those are the ones that can be used while in the kaya. So no any other garment or let's say clothing for the local community as they go to visit the kaya forest. They are only supposed to be in this. <coughs> but for the tourists, because we don't go to offer sacrifices there, we don't go there to pray, we only have a designated area that we visit, then we are supposed to be in this. Yes. So every each one of us will have one, then we will this is Tink Museums and I'm here at Kaya Kinondo in Diani and we're gonna check out the sacred forest of the Miji Kenda people. forest here is standing on a once uh, coral bed. Many years ago this place was maybe under the sea water. So we have this coral landscape in the forest where the terrestrial forest now is growing on top. Yes. So we have a lot of dead corals we will find in the forest. And that is the nature of most of the coastal forests that we have around here. There is this availability of the coral rocks alongside the terrestrial forest. Because most of these trees, all the trees that we find around are not marine trees. They are just terrestrial forest. Yeah. So here we have a small hut. This is known as Kazumba Kangmanamulungu. That's the traditional name for this hut. Kazumba Kangmanamulungu is a replica, let's say it's a copy of a small hut of this nature that is normally built the same, same day for prayer early in the morning, maybe when it's still dark, is built around, a, or let's say at the beginning of a, a path or a trail that will take the people to the center of prayer for the, same, uh, for the sacred ceremony. So that work is normally done in collaboration among the community and each one of them, the committee members have a responsibility. 
For example, the women have a responsibility of bringing the grass for the thatch. The men have a responsibility of doing the, the, the construction that same morning. It's normally a temporary hut. It's not a permanent one. There are normally four entrance, entry paths into the forest where the community can use as they go to the Kaya for a ceremony. That is, each person in the community belongs to a specific clan. So if I belong to the clan of Machuma, I have my own path that I have to use my entryway. If I belong to Zube, I have my own, the Mbega and the Mashitoro. Those are the major four clans with the four major entry paths into the forest. So four uh, huts of this nature are constructed at every, at the periphery of the forest where the people have to go through. So long ago, the forest was quite a big one. It came to the beachfront and find the village. So today, when these huts are being constructed, will not be constructed here. It is where they used to be, those back in the days. So the people will come until now they connect to the forest. Because now after encroachment, the forest was squeezed to a very small portion of 30 acres. We have the bush babies, they are very active at night, they are so many. Uh, we have other small mammals like the Sunni antelopes, we have the bush dikers, we have the red, uh, with the zanj elephant shoe and the golden ramp elephant. We have many of these palms in the forest. This is an indigenous palm, we call it Mutsapu in our local language, but it's called the Saikad palm, in the common, that's the common name. The Saikad palm, is uh, just a forest palm that is not used for anything in the community but for people who want to have some beautification around their gardens. It is one of the, the trees that have stayed on around for many years, for a long, long time on the earth's surface. Actually, the palms, uh, these cycad palms are some of the plants, species that are known to live for very, for very long. Yes. Look at this one. We have all the rings that can be seen alone. These rings have formed like once every year. Each year, one ring forms. And this. So this shows you that this kind of palm has come along many years for each year. It's one of the smallest in the forest. We have others. So this shows you that the forest is very old. We have very old trees in the forest. Because we've been observing, even here, maybe before the end of the year, we will have a ring forming on top there. And that is how they, they do every year, every year, once every year. Yeah. Apart from the trees that we can see them standing, we have this kind of climbers. We call them lianas or climbers. Wild scientists. So they are also part of the biodiversity in the forest. Anything else in the forest? In the village, the community, the, the, the local people use firewood as the only source of fuel for their cooking and everything in the, in the homes. So we could uh, maybe supply a lot of firewood in the forest. But now because it's not allowed here, the village is just like 50 meters from the boundary of the forest. But none of the women will come here to pick the firewood. Not because they fear, but because they respect the country mm. and, the, and the spirits of the forest. So when the wood like falls off like this, it stays until it is 
by its own, by itself. Like this one is many years since it fell down. You can see how it is rotting. Mm -hmm. Look at that. Uh -huh. Yes, you are welcome here. We have a tree we call the feed tree, ficus. The ficus family is normally a big family. That is many, many types of ficuses, but this is one of the called the strangling feed part of the ficus family. So to me, I call it a moving tree. It moves from one place to the other. You know how? This is where it started that long time ago. But it looks like there was a log on the surface of the ground. And I remember seeing that log myself back in the days. They had actually moved around there. So, um, it moved along that log, came to this point. Then the tree was able to stand by itself as a standing tree, but still standing. Okay. Now with time, the same same tree has moved, standing here, and here it is now. Oh. And slowly now, this same same part is still moving to that point. Here. And maybe it will continue moving. <laughs> you never know. So slowly with time and him. Uh, many years to come, maybe the whole of this place will be under one tree mm. only. Mm. Yes. So has this tree wrapped around the tree that was stood there? Or is that all no. the same tree? No. The one that was wrapped around the same yeah. tree here went off away because just, just the cage was a log yeah, yeah. right here. But that is the same same tree so standing. That's, that's not a different tree? That's, no, it's, it's just gone along and then up? Uh, oh yeah, exactly. It's standing on by itself. Okay. Yes. I thought it looked like it's wrapped around a different yeah. tree. But so mm -hmm. So that is how this standing seed yeah. operates. But when, as it does that, maybe it can come into contact, or let's say, across another tree, mm. close to you, it can strangle that tree, and maybe get a horse in the way. Yeah. That's why you can see like this one that's strangled. The fruit of this tree are good for the birds. In fact, it's disposed by birds, because they eat the fruits. Mm. Oh, the openings around there, some geckos lizards can live in there, mm. so it supports the environment in many ways. Mm. Yeah, it's quite a nice tree. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we call it Michikoma. It's one of the rare species that are found in the forest. It's only found here as well. It's called the rare Eglinia, that's scientific name. But the leaves of this forest, uh, of this tree, I mean, are uh, very important medicinal parts that are can actually use the community. When one has some running nose, some sinuses, some bloating nose, direct, you just uh, wrap, them. Right, wrap them like this, then you have a sleeve. You see how it works. Oh, wow. Those are like, just like boots. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that'll get rid of it. <laughs> oh, I wasn't expecting that. Yeah. Oh. Those are the two. Two hands your brain. What? You sure does? Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah? Wow. So that's exactly how it works. I need something. Anybody want to take two? I'm like, oh my god. Yeah, Christine, I don't know if I can do it again. Yeah. Thank you. Right. I can sleep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'll try it again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so nuts. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Okay. So we call it mukota oh. ongo mm -hmm. in the local uh, local uh, name of this tree. Mm -hmm. um, mukota means knocking. Mm -hmm. and ongo is the brain. So yeah. it knocks I'm your brain. Knocking my brain. Yes, it does. <laughs> All the way down to yeah. my throat. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. You can even feel it in your chest. Yeah. So that's how effective some wow. of these. It's um, mm. like horseradish. It's yeah. like you sniff yeah, yeah, yeah. horseradish. Yeah. Yeah.
Oh, this is the same one. This is the same one. Oh, the mm -hmm. Yeah. So the whole of this place here is a place that was specifically done by the community. And this is where they are from the first settlement. Mm. That's where they built their small huts, where they used to stay here. And it's divided into sections. Maybe they where they live. And there are a special place where they used to bury the people, there are a special place where they used to worship, there's a special place where they used to bury the fire. You will not see that. And even there are some plants that were not indigenous, but they were planted by the people when they lived. Here. So you can see the fake place, you can even run around, no mm -hmm. Just like you know, yeah. Ah, very, very, very uh, good. Do you see? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just a medicinal plant mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you can easily cook them if you like uh, tap it. Then uh, when we are young we used to cut it in the night. Mm -hmm. Then uh, this lattice comes into like a whole uh, container here. <laughs> then we make some balls to, to play around. Mm -hmm. Because it's sticky just like rubber. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. They climb from one tree to the other, but they are just like, let's say that they have roots, they have the stem and the leaves on top. Ah. Maybe they get a lot of a big weight, mm -hmm. they live for many years. Ah, they might be unfortunate to like fall down like this because of the shallow rooting that they, they have. Because uh, they mostly maintain their roots on the surface. So unless they are very strong enough, sometimes when too much rain comes or too st very strong winds from the beach here comes or from the ocean, then some of the trees fall down. Yeah. Oh, that's the whole building. Okay. Yeah. Before we go too far, here is one very important tree that I want to show you. This one. Uh, it has a scientific name called the Diphysia species A, but not well or less than it fully uh, analyzed and fully named out the scientists of the museums. So we don't know the common name of the tree as of now. But traditionally we call it Mchikoma. The Mchikoma is a very important tree to the forest and the people of, the, of Kinondo. First of all, it is a medicinal plant. The roots of this tree and the barks of the tree, when burnt into fire, then one inhales that stuff, or they say the, the, the smoke out of it. It goes into a very deep sleep. So it makes you sleep deeply. So traditionally here we use it for the treatment of depression. If someone is sick, depressed kind of, we use this tree to treat that kind of madness. Yes. That's why it's called mchikoma. Koma means madness, means depressions in the local language. So muchi is the muti, koma. Second, it is uh, known that it is only found in this forest. From the research that was done along the coast of Kenya, it was only found to be in kayak in wow. Yes. So you see the kayak, uh, this uh, the physical species air is endemic in this forest. Yes. yes. So it's one of the very rare trees and very important trees in the forest. See the, um, the new ring up there, that's uh -huh. from there, or the cycle. Mm -hmm. yeah. The young leaves, doesn't it? In the middle? Yeah. In the middle, yes. Ah, yes. Very young, fresh leaves. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, since last year, it is now this year. So, after that, they grow slowly, but I think next year, then we will get new. Yes, here is a tree. So huge. Okay, this is called uh, Munguo Nguo. That's the local name. Nguo means the cloth we are wearing. All this cloth we are wearing is called Nguo, general name. So Munguo Nguo is a tree that back in the days, the community used to peel the bark from the tree 
put it in water or say bury it in the ground for some days. Then after cleaning it, they will get a blanket material kind of life that they could use as a cloth. Nguo means cloth. So nguo nguo, that's how the tree is used and that's why it's go, it got its name. Yes. So uh, we have just a few of these trees remaining in the forest and no cutting is allowed now. But it's a very soft wooded tree. Yeah? So if you like cut it today, in a few months it will be gone. Yeah. So the bark is a bit thick. So you can peel the one that you want. If you need a handkerchief, maybe a small one. <laughs> if you need a bed sheet, you will go for a bigger piece of it. That's how they used to. I think these trees were many in the forest. Mm -hmm. And also the tree, the, the copyright also used to use the, uh, the hide and skins also to do their clothes. So I think that is before uh, the, clo the, the cotton <laughs> clothing mm -hmm. was introduced here by those who came, like the Indians, the Portuguese, and all those, yeah, who use the bark clothing. Yes. So we have two species of these trees. They look very similar, but scientifically they are different. So even with the kind of clothing the committee used to have, actually the color was different. So we have one that gives white pieces of material, other one was brownish kind of material. So according to the community, they will separate that. The white was worn by the men and the brown was worn by the women. That's according to the customs there. Yeah? So in the olden days also, when people could go very long distances in the forest, either for hunting or gathering kind of, they would maybe uh, have some kind of uh, uh, go through very, it would be very dry and very hot. So what they used to do is like to go to a mungungu like this one. Because it's so soft inside and it's believed to have a lot of water. So they would hug the tree, bare chested, and it would cool them down. Mm, yeah, it would wow. feel like it's cooling you down. I think that is before Coca-Cola and, <laughs> <laughs> and the soft drinks were <laughs> brought. So that's how they used to, to cool down. Mm -hmm. Even you can feel it from here. Mm. Just come over, touch it, you can hug it, feel the, the coolness cool, around it. Yes. And how old is a tree like this? Well, it, stage, it could be very old, but uh, because uh, there's one characteristic with the indigenous trees, they normally grow very slowly. Mm. So this, by estimation, could be more than 200 years. Wow. Yes. Wow. Wow. Wonderful. Cool. Cool. Yes. Is it the call? Actually, a tree hugger. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's how cool it is. You can try it, huh? Yeah. That looks beautiful. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Very cool. Very cool. It's the skin. Oh, on the nice. skin. It has a cold. Yes. So, also, in another way, the community could uh, use it to make some canoe. You see that this small canoe that we use to go in our local fishing area? Mm -hmm. So, you just make a uh, piece of the log, then dig around the canoe from this. Oh wow. Then it's good go fishing. Because it's quite light in the water. <laughs> yes. Wow. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Mind the roots and then you the roots do create on their own. If I'm here, I'll be hanging on this tree <laughs> every day. <laughs> this is really my nice spot. The balance is like yeah. it's competitive. The big roots too. Yeah. It's a big tree. Yeah. You see, that's why they say nature is everything. Mm. You can't go around planting trees. It's not a size of tree on that. Yeah, one. right? It's beautiful. <laughs> Look at that. Wow. That's the root. Look at this. Wow. Whoa. Yeah, this is a cool tree.
is tamarind that's in the tamarind tree. You seen tamarind? Mm -hmm. Yes, we use it here for you know, delicacies like uh, juices and even our cooking also to put that uh, sourness in our meal. We use the tamarind fruit. So the tamarind is one of the is is a tree that normally doesn't grow in forests. Um, it has been seen that most of the tamarind trees will grow in open areas where there are once some settlements along the beach you can find tamarind trees old settlements or in any place that is open not forested you can easily find tamarind tree this tree is growing here today it was researched on and it's more than 500 years now 500 plus years very old tree uh, now because it is growing here right at the place where the people used to stay this shows that the people could have planted this tree because of the fruit. Yeah. They introduced the tree here and they used the fruit for for, for the spices and maybe the liquors making the meal or that. So now the tamarind tree is introduced here. It's the only tree in this forest. One of the alien trees. We only have two alien trees in this forest. This one and the other one there, surely. So it's one of the trees that are not is not indigenous here. Kind of a sign that we're using to show this was once a settlement. Flowering of this tree, we call it musambwe. This tree flowering normally occurs along the stem. You can see these tiny flowers yeah. that are forming now. Yeah. yeah. If you bring your nose closer, it has a very kind of a special smell on that. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. I think it's particularly lovely. But like um, mm -hmm. look at the, the one that has opened. Okay. Interesting. Huh? Right? Yes. Like that's the flowering. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you get it? Mm. Yes. So later, then fruits will start forming just along there. So you find so many fruits around there. Around there. You see. They are green when they are still young, but uh, when they are ready to eat, they are yellow. And even people eat them. Yeah. Baboons will eat them fast before. <laughs> what, what is it called? What's the fruit? The fruit is musambwe, sambwe, sambwe fruit. It's called musambwe in the literature. Repetis natalensis. By the current community, I want to come and do some prayer to their ancestors. Because what they believe on is that when the ancestors are happy, then the community is healthy, fair. So there is an outbreak of things that they cannot explain. First thing is they feel the ancestors are not happy with them. So they gather some few things around themselves, like the local palm wine some special food they traditionally prepare, okay? some castor oil, some special music they do, and dances. Then they come to perform it here, give that as sacrifices. They will even slaughter animals like a whole bull to the ancestral ground. Then they feel that in the prayer they have done to their ancestors. Because what the people believe is that they believe in a supreme God who is in heaven, but they pray to him through the ancestors. So whenever they want to make a prayer to their God, for them to have more fish in the, in the ocean, they have to check the assistance first. If there is an increase of things like mosquitoes and even snakes in the village, then they feel the ancestors are coming for them because they are not complying. So they come over, make them happy, and then what they believe is that they do. If there's lack of rain for a long, long time, they come over here, give the sacrifice, make the prayer, then the rain comes. I even happened to ask my own dad. He told me those prayers were very effective back in the days. The rain could start immediately when the prayers were even after a long drought. Back in the days, those kind of prayers were very effective. But after neglecting them because of other things, 
modernity and uh, other religions that you see now, some of these things don't work as they used to, to work. Yes. But the good thing is that they continue to respect, they continue to respect the, the sites and also protecting the, the forest. Yeah. Yes. So this is where they normally gather. When they come into their, those pathways, they get here, they assemble here. Then from here, there's another place. Yes. Yeah. for many years, right? This is the only place in the forest where the lighting of the fire, the cooking, everything is done here. So when the community comes there for a ceremony and they assemble all the things, and they have to maybe slaughter a bull, a sacred of this, and uh, with the flesh, you know? then they bring the carcass. They make it nicely, then it's actually roasted here. The, the meat, food here is not cooked outside, it has to be cooked inside here. So it's only mostly roasting of the meat, not cooking meat. And then while doing that, the people normally have to be doing it standing, not like sitting and uh, chatting around. You have to do it while standing. So you will find the men around here just uh, roasting the meat but standing. So the eating is also happening while standing. No spices is put in the meat, not even salt. So you just eat it the way it is. And uh, you are supposed to eat all the food in the forest, not outside. When it remains, maybe a wild animal can take it, or you can come back the next day and continue eating until all the meat is finished. That's how it, it is done. Yes. Uh, just another place inside there where we don't photograph that pot. From there, go to that side. It's a bit hidden in the central clearing where we have the fingo, the magical charm there. We have the graves of the ancestors where everything is, is done there. Wow. So those who normally go there is not everyone, but specific Kaya elders. And led by only one supreme elder called Mbega. The one who leads the whole congregation there. While the rest wait for them. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So during that time, uh, it's unfortunate that only men go there. <laughs> Women have to wait from this side. And if it's a woman waiting from this side, she has to be a daughter of this community. So if she was married here, she cannot be part of the prayer. She has to go back to where she comes, maybe, and be part of it. But that's how it happens. Yes. So apart from the prayers alone, we have uh, other uses of the kaya. Sometimes there can be case, uh, like say, there's some quarrels, some fighting among the community. So all that work, like say, that, that mediation is done in the kaya. It is accompanied by a certain sacrifice. Um, there can be, like say, uh, let's say some at family level, maybe husband and wife, constant fights and completely no, no, no peace, and they feel they can come to the kaya. They still are allowed to do that. They give a sacrifice and the mediation is done and it's, it's gone. Yes. If someone is, uh, let's say, a serial killer, a serial murderer, then the, I mean, the, the case is settled here. And even, um, I will say that if it is uh, agreed among the community that he has to be killed, then it can be done in the car. But that is until they feel there is no other but all this is some of the work that has been done in the time. Just apart from the, 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 the sacred activity. Yes. You understand about this place? Yeah. yeah. Even the museums have done some carbon dating of the ash. They have said it's more, they found it more than 400 years plus. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yes. So this tree here is a, um, we call it a Indian almond tree. It's one of the alien trees. But it's also very old. There are quite a number of them here, down and others in the forest. So maybe they also planted because the age of these trees. 
is uh, quite old. Yeah? Yeah. So maybe they were also planted here. Because they're close to the over, but then oh. it goes up again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wow. This is a sacred forest here in India. So back in the days the place was clean because they used to clean it and uh, get the water from here. But uh, it has been neglected over hundreds of years maybe now. No one comes here to take the water. So you can find there's a lot of trash, and, uh, not dirt that is all here. But this is the source of water. Also. It has not rained today heavily so you can't find it but maybe there's some overflow. It just comes from the ground. Mm. Yes. So maybe the forest also is contributing to the survival of this, this one. Yeah? But maybe when we clear away this forest, <laughs> this yeah. will die yeah. definitely. Yeah. Yes. Which will not be right for us, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So around here you can find some amphibians sometimes. Oh, wow. oh, oh, oh. Look at that. Fish what? Look at that. Oh, wow. oh, oh it's it can be fish. Oh, How lucky are you guys? Look at the eyes. You said it's the African fish eagle? This is a fish. And fish Maybe it's coming fish. for water. Yeah. It's coming for water or fish? Just fish. The amphibians that are in here. Small, small. Water. Look at the beak. So we have white ones. Yeah. Oh, no, when it spreads off the wings, you can find there's some, some brownish some black. part. Some blackish part, yes. It's waiting for me to change the lens. Yeah, mm. of course. This day. So. What do we call it? Oh. Fish eagle. Fish eagle. Fish eagle. Fish eagle. Oh, fish eagle. Oh, Got it. Now you're gonna fly away. It's like a whole mask. <laughs> <mouse. laughs> <laughs> yes. It's well adapted for the capture of prey in the water. That big one. Father and put it now. You know, you know that it wants me to do it. Yeah. So that's an indicator that we have some kind of water, a few years old, nice right. fish here, around here, and live here, mm. and demand fish or kind of thing. So. Do you usually see this bird here in this area? I remember seeing it here many years ago, the same same branch, but uh, it's quite long now I've not seen it. <laughs> Sorry. Amanda. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Definitely Okay, be careful when you step on this. Huh? Be careful when you step on this tree. Oh, 
How are you feeling? <laughs> It's a millipede, don't tell me. Oh, it's a big millipede. Yeah. There's a big millipede here. It's like the good shot. Yeah, 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 box is gonna be back in. 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 Yeah, Hey YouTube, thank you guys for watching my trip here in Kayakinondo, here in Biani. This is one of the sacred forests protected by the National Museums Act here in Kenya. Uh, pretty insightful moments here. We went deep into the kayak and we saw all this cool stuff. So, this is how it is. Biani is the visitor center. This was quite informative. Uh, just coming to the kayak and understanding how people live. Uh, please subscribe and support this channel. And if you are visiting Mombasa, Kenya, or the area of Diani, which has the best beach in the world, or beaches in the world, then make a trip down to Kayak Inondo and just see the sacred forest.